Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Anything Goes. My name's Andrew Deacock, and today I'm proud to be joined by, now as Smithy likes to call it, uh, want to know your box of 100% record. How's that feel? <laughs> yeah, it feels good, man. Don't get, it don't get better than that, innit, at the minute. No. And how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all good, thank you, yourself. Yeah, I'm great, Sumi. Um, West Ham came off of a draw to fill. I'm not happy with that, but you know what? We'll take a draw away from home. We didn't really play the best, but we're proud of our team. And you came off a win against Tottenham today in the North London derby. Yeah, man. History repeats itself, doesn't it? It's beginning to be um norm, the norm now. So I don't even, I ain't even feeling too, too gassed about it, to be honest. And I gotta ask you about it, that because I asked Lewis Oakford the other day. Could we see you going for a quadruple this season, or do you just want the Prem, the Champions League? What is it? I'll be, did, did we win anything last season? I don't. I don't think you did. You came second. The League Cup went to. Did it go to United or to Liverpool? Liverpool got the League Cup. United yeah. got the FA Cup. And yeah, yeah no, nothing. All we won but... was the flipping Community Shield. So yeah. I'll be happy to win something at this point. Mm. I'll be honest. I think the Prem. At the minute, it looks like a stretch. Haaland's already won the golden boot, as it looks like. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. He's unreal. Like, what is it? Four games? I can't remember all of City's games. But against Ipswich, they go 1-0 down, win 4-1. Haaland hat trick. Against West Ham, which I said, I called my dad before the game started. I was like, Dad, how many goals is Haaland going to score? He's like, don't worry about that. Just enjoy the game. I, was, I just knew all the goals would come from him. We go 1-0 up, 3-1 down. And then he done it yesterday as well, um, going 1-0 down to Brentford and two goals. So I think he has eight, if not 10 goals in four games, which is unreal. So do you see yourself winning the Champions League this year? Nah, no chance. No chance. I'll be honest. If if we can't, if we, if I'm not confident about us winning the league, I ain't confident about us winning Champions League. I'll be honest with you. Especially now that Real Madrid batted um, Mbappe. Yeah. Yeah, myth. Your third favourites on the bookies to win it after City and Real Madrid. That's crazy to me. Yeah, <laughs> it is. For as long out as you have been. Because I remember, and everyone would make jokes about it in school, because the last time you played Champions League football, I think it was 16, 17, and then and but you, you lost to Barcelona at home and in the way, and then there's yeah. a Europa League. But you're back at it now, and you know it just shows the faith not only the bookies have in Arsenal, but... Your performance last year was was good and hopefully go further in the quarterfinals this year. So let's go on to that. So we talk about your professional debut against Stefan Vincent, super lightweight contest, six rounds. Do you want to talk about why you delved straight into a six rounder? Um yeah, to be honest with you, I didn't like the amateurs. To put it plain and simple, the three rounds weren't enough for me. Um I always used to get going um really by the second round, but in the amateurs, you can't afford it. You lost the first round and you have a close second round. Chances are they're giving it to the geezer that won the first round. So the third round, I'm chasing it big. And I've always kind of needed to get the stoppage. Sometimes I've got it, sometimes I didn't. So four rounds is one more round than the amateurs. And I've seen past... What it is is you want to learn from people's mistakes. I've seen a lot of... Um, professionals go into four rounds early and like maybe a flash knockdown happens or they slip and you're already two points down and you're chasing. The journeyman gets a bit excited. He has another good crack at another round. You've then got to win the last two rounds and you've got a draw. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't look good. Whereas six rounds um, is better pace for me and I can avoid all of them sort of, you know, issues. Yeah, that's fully understood because there have been many occasions where a journeyman knocks down the prospect in the first round and he has to come back to win the last three or he's won the first two or, or it's one of those slugfests where you don't know how to score it so it ends up being scored yeah. a draw. So how did you find it? Because you said it there, you, you didn't like the amateurs, not didn't like them, but it wasn't your style. Six rounds, did it feel like it went too quick or was it smooth pace and you control it? Um, I'll be on, I'll be honest. We train hard in the gym. We we don't train four, four six rounds. We train as if we're championship fighters. At the end of the day, so the six has been a breeze. I was doing a couple of eight rounds sparring, um, in camp, um, and we're always doing six rounds, really minimum. So I'll be honest. When the final, when the bell rang to say last, like the ref came over and was like touch gloves last round. I was kind of like flipping out. This went by quick. So, um. <laughs> 
I don't think I have problem any problems as the rounds go up. But yeah, for for as far as the six, it was no problem. And what did you make of the contest? Because I don't want to focus on the negatives and we don't need to go there, but it was 59.55 on the card. And do you feel there have been some comments saying it was a close fight? I thought it was a shout out 60.54 and you ended from round four, five and six onwards amazingly. What do you make of it? Were you most impressed of yourself, regardless of critics? And what did you make of the contest? Um, I touch on it twofold in terms of the performance i wasn't happy because i'm better than what i showed obviously it's your debut you want to showcase as much as you can in terms of skill and um in regards to that not being the case the opponent had obviously something to do with that he is game he is awkward um i didn't know he had social media so all the comments i was making in um, the promos to try and sort of sell myself and whatnot got back to him. Fight week, he was actually like liking some of my content and stuff, um, which was strange. So it got back to him, and even like the last ten seconds of the um final round when the clapper went, he was like shouting, oh, "I thought he was gonna stop me! I thought he was gonna stop me!" So obviously, it, um, his whole game plan was like not getting stopped. When I see him. Um, walking out with like a kid or I don't know whether it's his kid or they're related in some shape or form I was like this geezer's up for it so um, yeah it made it awkward for me had he not known anything about me it could have been a different outcome but listen I went in there just looking for a stoppage I'll be honest um, and it didn't it didn't come obviously um, and uh, in regards to the comments and whatnot, I think it was one of them situations where expectation raised the bar of what they were expecting. Um, you know, it's kind of like when a friend suggests a restaurant and he's like, oh, it's amazing, it's this and that, and then you go there. Because they've raised your expectations so high, what you go there and you're almost like, oh, no, nah, this is like, it's just, like, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? So I think yeah. that's what I experienced um, with a commentary uh, in regards to my fight, but it's all good. No, I get that, bro. And yeah, I just want to talk about it there. Were you looking for the knockout? Were you trying to get him out? Or because I'll get onto it in a moment, but yeah, let's answer that there. Were you looking for the knockout? And you mentioned a comment said that if he, he he didn't see your post, maybe it could have been a different way, but were you looking to stop him and get him out of there? Yeah, I was, and I made it very clear. I'll be honest, I made it very clear. Every interview that anybody asked me, um, like how do I see it going or what do I want to bring to the pro game? I've always said stoppages. That's not going to change because I didn't get it um, in my debut. It's entertainment business at the end of the day. I'm never going to go into the ring wanting to get rounds or like wanting to win like on points. Mm -hmm. I will never go in the ring like that. So my mentality there, especially it being my debut, you know, you go to bed the night before thinking about the shots you're going to land you know, the highlight real knockout. So, yeah, I will definitely admit I was going for the for the stoppage. I just went about it the wrong way. I was looking for one shot. Um, I wasn't looking for combinations and ways to set it up. I just thought it was going to come um, with a big shot. And that's that's kind of how, how the night went. And most fighters are self-critical of themselves. And even if they've stopped the opponent, even if they've gotten a decision, even if they've won a title, they, they feel like they could have done more, they wanted to do something better. Is it just you as a person or is it everyone instinctually, especially as boxers, that uh, you're self-critical and always want to do better? Yeah, it's, it's something I've, I've always been like that, to be honest. There was a fight I had um, in a championship for, uh, as an amateur. And um, I think I dropped the kid like three times, uh, nearly got him out of there. Had a very, very big last round. Um, and I come out, I was pissed. And um, everyone was looking, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I was like, nah, I wasn't happy with the performance. So even on your good days, um, or even on my good days, should I say, I've always been critical. You know, there's you never the finished article. I'm not perfect. Um, I still got a lot to learn and um, a lot more to show. So, yeah. I love that. And you said it to me there, compared to your amateur fights, you felt you didn't feel nervous for this one and you felt like home. Yeah, man. I, when I started boxing, my visions of boxing were the bright lights and the pro game. I'll be honest with you. The only reason I stayed in the amateurs as long as I did was because I knew that I needed to build a foundation um, in terms of getting experience, 
um, rounds under my belt and whatnot and progressing. But my goal was always looking at the pros. I used to watch pros all the time. And my coaches would be like, mate, you're not a pro. Stop watching pros. Watch amateurs. And I just always watch pros. So um, I think I said this somewhere else um, to somebody else, sorry. Um, I had 30 amateur bouts. And I was more nervous for every single one of them than I was for my pro debut. And I think it showed like how relaxed I was on the ring walk, in the ring, everything. So, yeah, no nerves. And talk about that there, your coach, your team. It, it felt it felt like a vibe, a different aura. Like, I don't want to say celebrity. I say this to Ezra Taylor because he, he just brings a different vibe. But it felt like you controlled it. You were smooth. There was no nervous energy. energy. There wasn't no excitement. It wasn't. It was all business. And it was like you'd done it before. And talk about that, walking out with your team. And how did the ring walk feel? And what was the tune you walked out to? Yeah, it was surreal. I'll be honest, it was surreal. Um... It, it all, everything kind of contributed to the performance being what it was. I know, like, you're giving me credit saying, you know, you felt I controlled it and it's a good debut. And a lot of other people have said that, but it could have been way better. And partly, part to blame, I was kind of in a daze. I'll be honest, like, this wasn't always, this wasn't always destined to happen or it didn't always look like it was going to happen. Um, both from what I thought of myself and what people were telling me. So to be in a changing room, wrapping my hands as a pro, the walkout, everything was just surreal. And it was almost like I was living a dream. It's kind of like I had an out-of-body experience, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, it was great, man. The the ring walk, everything. And um, I walked out to um, Black Sheriff, Roadrunners, I was I wanted to wait for the beat to drop. Unfortunately, they were rushing me, so oh. um, we didn't get to that part. But people said they enjoyed it and it gave them goosebumps, so it was good. I love that, bro. And talk about it there now. It's all said and done. How did it feel? You were the third bout on the zone. How did, and the fifth bout on the card. How did it feel fighting on the zone and on the top tier show? Yeah, it was great. I say every time. Um, in regards to the top two show, when I found out I was on it, I was happy as it was. Mm -hmm. Then the addition of it being on the zone was like it was the cherry on top, you know. So now it was a great experience. Um, Johnny had me on a, a great slot around seven ish whenever I was in the ring. Um, it don't get much better than that. So I'm obviously thankful to my management team for getting me on there, uh, takeover sports management and Leon Sosbury. Um, and I'm also appreciative of Johnny for accepting me on the show so you know I'm grateful man um listen they can only give me the opportunities it's up to me to do to do something with the opportunity so yeah man grateful and it was free on a night free and oh on a night for you said well a hat trick I don't know I don't I, I say everything happens for a reason but I guess it was God's plan I miss all three of you miss you miss Harvey miss <laughs> Lily for an interview after but I guess it was destined to be and we've got the time to catch up now so before I let you go when would you next like to be out and yeah stay tuned man I uh, already got a, a date locked in um yeah, I don't want to give too much away. but Not, not uh, to spoil it, but could we say it's Johnny's next show or you don't want to say anything? It could be. It could well be. All I know is I'll be out before the end of the year. So 2-0, and all, loading. And what do you do this time to, God willing, get the stoppage and envision an even better performance in your debut? I just got to be myself. To be honest with you, what you guys saw wasn't really me. I just turned into every other sort of boxer that Goes in there for stoppage. I was just walking down, not thinking about what's coming back, looking for one big shot. So as long as I, um, as I'm myself and who I really am, and show my skills and whatnot, um, the stoppage will come. Listen, if it doesn't come, it will be a great performance. So, yeah, man. Love to hear that. And to me, what's your final message to your supporters that came out on a night? Any, everyone that praised you, everyone that was bigging up the day, we so excited to see you out and have supported you since you amateur, supported you after this contest and you supported you've gained because I'm sure your followers have probably shot up from being on the zone and all the reels that Johnny's posted. And what's your uh, message to the fans that will come to the next one? Yeah, I'm massively grateful for everybody, you know, that turned up and paid their hard-earned money to come you know, because it's, at the end of the day, it's not just them 
buying a ticket, they've got to travel down, you know, to come see you. You know, it's not it's not cheap. Um, so I'm definitely grateful for everybody that come down to to show me support on my debut. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them at the next one and my sponsors as well. You know, backing me. This journey ain't, ain't possible without sponsors. So I'm just as grateful to them as well. And did you manage to sell many of your shirts this time? Yeah, I did a couple, you know. Um, funny enough, um, during my time at uni, uh, when I when I left, I worked a job locally uh, within with the NHS uh, with a bunch of lovely ladies and my boss Andy, um, and they they were the ones that bought uh, most of the t shirts. They wanted t shirts because they obviously couldn't make it down from the Midlands. Um, so yeah, no, nah, it's good. It's good support, man. Love that, brother. Future superstar in the making and a superstar himself, Toomey Phillips. Make sure to tune in, follow his career, and see him next time out. God bless, Toomey. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. You too.